Okay, folks, good evening. Uh, it's me again. Uh, I kind of can be a bit annoying with uh, this, my idea of uh, flow-based programming. Uh, first time I presented to Berlin community my alpha framework like one year ago. And this is kind of again about the same, but on a different level. Like Alf was kind of for uh, applications, just for one single application, and Kraken is kind of this idea on a higher level, on a system level, how we can apply the same flow-based approach to a system level. So uh, lots of people, uh, yeah, it's me. My name is Anton. I am software engineer. I have several Elixir project. Maybe someone of you uh, heard about ISPEC, yeah, ALF, Octopus that I presented, uh, uh, I think, in November. Yeah, GitHub, uh, Medium. Uh, so, uh, some of you already heard about ALF. ALF is a flow-based application layer framework. Yeah, it's Elixir, Elixir thing, Elixir uh, kind of DSL and execution runtime for creating like pipeline of functions, let's say. Yeah, together with this beautiful visualization uh, language. And yeah, like the basic idea uh, behind ALF, behind this flow-based approach, is presenting application, is presenting, it is presenting an application as a set of flow, and each flow is just a uh, sequential transformation of input data. So any interaction with the system uh, creates an event, like a set of data with some attributes, then this event just goes through each component in, in the flow, and each component does some transformation with the data, does some transformation in external uh, world, in database, whatever. And then finally, uh, in the, uh, at the output, you have a kind of data structure that represents the result of this interaction. Yeah? So this is a really great engineering idea to, to have like a thing that you can really follow through each stage and follow all these transformations. So that's the basic idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the same, the same with ALF. You just kind of create these components with simple DSL, uh, and you design your program in a way that uh, event goes through this transformation. Like in this simple example, let's say we have a flow when when a user orders uh, some product. Yeah, so we have this order event that has, for example, user ID and product ID in it. Then it goes to first component that finds the product, then create order. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is idea of assembly line or events conveyor. Just trying to invent some buzzwords also. Uh, and and the second uh, idea behind behind the ALF is uh, this, yep, oops, can I, uh, is uh, this control panel idea that, uh, is it possible, yeah, please, please come in. Come in, come in, hello. <laughs> Uh, like uh, control panel in a very general way. Like, is it is it possible like to see to see my application as it is, how it works? Yeah, without all this uh, difficult debugging, just see on one screen, on one place, what what is going on uh, uh, in my in my application. Uh, yeah, in this video I already uh, presented it. Uh, um, this video from uh, my uh, presentation about Alf. It's kind of uh, with with ALF framework. It it basically under the hood it uses Elixir gen stages, so it's kind of real uh, Elixir Erlang processes connected into these chains. Uh, with telemetry, it's extremely easy to to actually get notification about each stage uh, that event uh, passed. So it's really easy to visualize these pipelines. It's really easy to track kind of event. Like you see, like here you can see. Uh, what was event as an input to the component, what was the output, like for this find game specific event, you can track events through the whole pipeline, so it's a real great level of observability. So you kind of see this, you can uh, connect to, to production actually and see how this events going uh, between, between this component. So yeah, like two basic ideas, like uh, idea, uh, first kind of design ideas to design, to design program as, a, as an assembly line, as a data processing factory, let's say. And the second idea is to visualize it, yeah? to have like control panel to see, uh, to see what is going on inside the application. Uh, so yeah, uh, it was ALF. ALF is an Elixir library, so you can create this pipeline using Elixir programming language. Uh, and the next challenging idea was, uh, can, can we actually scale this approach to a system level? 
yeah, like not for only for application or for for a system and system i mean that when you you have uh, a set of services or microservices in, in your system and now we are going to to create kind of uh, orchestration layer like a simple simple application that will call in a, a proper way all these uh, underlying services yeah and kind of this idea quite quite natural because uh, if we uh, think about like one application we usually if we do this kind of in the right way when we uh, have a uh, uh, when we have a clear separation between domain and application layer yeah, in domain layer you have this modeling function that actually implements a business logic application layer just kind of orchestration layer that calls to this domain domain logic and the same idea actually is for the system but in the system uh, domain layer is implemented by services yeah, like user service product service whatever uh, service and and then like this kind of application layer on a system layer uh, level it will be like uh, orchestration layer yeah we call this orchestration layer <laughs> yeah and this kind of also this uh, idea choreography uh, versus orchestration yeah I would say like uh, if if you don't have uh, if you yep come in come in come in you didn't miss anything yet <laughs> Uh, uh, so yeah, I if you if you don't have explicit uh, 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 application layer in your program, let's say your your domain uh, your domain entities doing a choreography between itself. If if you if you have an explicit application layer, you have kind of choreography. Yeah, so like a specific like a, a layer on your program that actually uh, coordinate underlying routines. Yeah, so so called orchestration layer. And again, like uh, both in application layer and in orchestration layer, there is no business logic there. There is kind of very high level business logic, like how to finally produce an output, but all the uh, uh, minor details, like how to fetch user from database, all these kind of sit uh, inside domain uh, ob uh, objects, func functions, modules, or inside your services. Yeah, so kind of there is no huge, huge logic on this orchestration layer. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. Can we can we actually scale this approach to to a system level? Yeah, of course, of course we can. Uh, but first, uh, since a system can consist uh, can have many different services that have different interfaces. Yeah, I don't know uh, JSON API, uh, XML API, uh, databases, whatever. So they have different interfaces. Yeah, and first uh, first thing that we have to do before actually orchestrating it, it it's, it's is to create clients for uh, every service. Yeah, if we have clients like let's say we write uh, elixir libraries elixir clients for all the services on our system that's it we're kind of ready yeah we have this library so we can uh, use alf and, and orchestrate with alf uh, uh, all the system but uh, writing libraries is not kind of it's time consuming uh, thing also it requires no uh, uh, elixir knowledge yeah so we again kind of a bit uh, coped with, with with elixir here uh, but if we think a bit, what what actually client library does? Client library uh, client library doesn't do many things. Yeah, uh, when we uh, in order to create client, like what what client does? Uh, I have kind of uh, input data. Then I have to prepare some input to to the service for for, for underlying service like uh, API or something. Kind of get a username or email or something then doing a call to this service get get the response and get something from this response yeah so it's uh kind of uh, we can present this interaction with with the service as a, like this five step yeah uh in we have an input we prepare data to the service we call this data uh, we call this service we, we get response we, we transform this response and we have an output yeah so uh and yeah and actually uh the idea this kind of uh, simplification of writing client. This, the idea was born with discuss, uh, in discussion with Lucas. Lucas is not uh, here today, but uh, kudos to him. Uh, and the idea was, uh, can we kind of describe the service, describe the uh, client in declarative style? I don't, I don't need to, to write uh, Elixir co uh, uh, code. I just wanna like uh, specify what kind of clients I wanna use. Uh, HTTP, for example, HTTP JSON client, and they just wanna to uh, to specify my interface, yeah, like on this slide, like interface. Uh, uh, I'm using Edgeify uh, service. Edgeify service, you just send name there, and it returns like age, uh, uh, average age of people that were in their database. Yeah, it's very simple, just for for testing purposes. 
and interface uh, and you declaratively uh, create this kind of client yeah i specify the module uh, octopus client http finch i specify the a base url then i have interface uh, age for name there will be a function yeah uh, and of course the service has a name agfi then i create interface with function age for name in order to uh, to call this function first i uh, prepare you see this step uh, I, I tell explicitly that it should be method get to the root pass with parameter name and i get name from the argument that will send uh, from the data that i send to the client then call and then transform i want to see uh, age in my response and i kind of specify what what to do uh, how to get this from from the uh, client response yeah so this is the declarative way there is a bit of of course elixir but a very primitive way just kind of accessors yeah there's basic functions to to uh, manipulate with with data uh, uh, nothing more allowed so yeah it was octopus so actually octopus uh, with octopus you have with Octopus, the idea was that uh, having a system, you just deploy this Octopus I agent, like a uh, separate application, Elixir application, and then you kind of post to this, uh, not kind of, you post actually through JS JSON API, you post these uh, declarative definitions of services, and automatically you have clients to all, uh, all the services in your system. Yeah, and this is done in, in declarative ways. So you don't need to, to code Elixir, actually. You just post JSON there, uh, 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 these client, uh, clients are dynamically uh, creating, and then you can call this Octopus agent uh, like any any uh, any service mapping that uh, that you have created. You can call again using uh, HTTP uh, HTTP API. Uh, that uh, that is why it's uh, uh, I call it de uh, declarative interface mapping. So we just kind of mapping different interfaces uh, uh, to different services in your system in in uniform way, and now you have just simple JSON in, uh, interface to any service in your system. So that was the idea behind Octopus. Uh, this is kind of separate library. Uh, yeah. And, and now back to these pipelines. If we, again, think carefully what, what, uh, what happens in specific component, we also kind of see that not much happens. Yeah, if event comes into the component, we just get necessary data to call the underlying service from this event. We call this service, we get the response, and we put something from this response to the event. Yeah. So uh, the, the same idea of, of these three steps, like prepare, call, transform, but a bit different semantic because like a prepare step just uh, uh, just get some data from, from the event, prepare it uh, to the call, then call happened, and the transform step actually transform this event that was initial one. So transform step adds something or modify something in the event. Yeah. So in, in that sense, like what components does is al also kind of very simple thing. Just call underlying uh, service and transform, transform event uh, according to the response from the service. Yeah, and, and that's, that's it actually. So actually we can do the same uh, declarative approach also for defining components. So we can uh, create uh, s uh, 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 services, uh, define the, uh, this interface to the services with JSON, and also we can crea create components with JSON. And of course, we can easily uh, uh, create topology of these components here yeah, to create the pipelines, actually. Again, just dec in declarative way using, using JSON. And yeah, and that's kind of the basic idea uh, behind the Kraken, like to have, uh, to have uh, JSON DSL, I call it, JSON based development or JSON driven development. So you just specify these uh, JSONs and under the hood uh, you have this octopus that also create, uh, creates a service mapping and also you have runtime that actually uh, built all these pipelines and you have the same pipelines as uh, in ALF, like with, with all these processes, with everything that was that was in ALF. And of course this Kraken has an interface for defining all of that and then calling for all, all of that. Yeah, so yeah, that's idea around the Kraken and and yeah, and actually everything that was in uh, in Alf now implemented in Kraken. So the, uh, the all the set of components that uh, Alf has now it's in Kraken, and you can see how simple is the definition. So it's a definition of pipeline. Yeah, uh, this pipeline currently uh, has only one component. Yeah, just just to be simple. So again, you kind of describe. I I have uh, I need a pipeline, uh, and uh <coughs> mm, sorry, this ty type should be in in a, in component uh, uh, mistake. 
So, and then inside this pipeline, I have components and I describe this list of components. First components will be a, a stage with, uh, uh, with service that, that will call service simple mass with function at. Yeah, and this simple mass with function at it's, uh, also uh, comes, comes from the definition of services that we also define with, uh, with JSON. And then I have uh, prepare a step and transform step. And if, if we have an input event with x1 and uh, y equals 2, first it goes to prepare step. Yeah, from in this uh, prepare step, uh, uh, variable a will have value of x1, where value b will have uh, will be two. Yeah, it will call this simple simple math at uh, service under 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 the hood. The service will, will return uh, sum uh, equals three, and transform step will put that uh, will pull that will put that uh, that that in into the event. Yeah, and uh, as an output you will have x1, uh, uh, y2, z3. Yeah, so that's the idea. And yeah, and again, uh, the same idea uh, as it was with, with Octopus, with Octopus Agent. Uh, so the idea is that you create uh, your own control panel based on this Kraken, yeah? deploy it somewhere into your, into your system. Then you deploy all the services definition to map uh, on, on each service in your system. Then you deploy all these pipelines, start them, and Voila, you can call them again through through the uh, HTTP API, sending JSON events into this pipeline, and it will respond. So it will run everything under the hood and respond. Uh, yeah, like uh, DSL uh, uh, API is quite straightforward. So uh, API for defining services, AP API for defining pipeline and starting pipeline, and calling pipeline, and streaming events to pipeline, everything is here. Also, uh, the idea of uh, uh, Kraken has the idea of roads, so you can uh, have like typed events and and use just a single single uh, 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 single endpoint call, sending uh, into the single endpoint events of any type, and under the hood, uh, Kraken will route these events to to uh, co uh, to uh, corresponding pipeline. Yes, yeah, so you can define kind of this ro routing mechanism inside inside Kraken. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, and let's a bit uh, talk a bit more about philosophy. Why, why, why I think it's cool? Yeah, because uh, you have declarative, you have uh, de declarative definition of all the things in in your kind of orchestration layer. Yeah, and this service definition, these JSONs, is bas basically kind of specification of these services. They they d doesn't belong to any kind of program uh, into your system. They just specify a, s a service in your system. So this definition can also be used by guys who develop a particular particular services. Yeah, so you have kind of a, a good a good specification of all the services in your system written in a simple uh, readable JSON way. Uh, and yeah, so and uh, so this services kind of define the language of your system. All the service name and functions th that are accessible uh, inside uh, the services are kind of define your language. Yeah, and, and, and then pipelines, uh, actually when you create these use cases, flows, you kind of define a story in your application. Yeah, and again, these pipelines, uh, these are just JSON files, so everyone can understand it. You don't need uh, understanding of Elixir to understand what is going on in a, uh, in a specific flow. Cool. Yeah, simple example, just to uh, quickly show you how it look uh, in, in reality. So it's artificial uh, example. I did it uh, yesterday. So uh, using GitHub API, uh, you have to build a chain of similar followers. The idea that as an input, I have query and limit. Then first I found uh, that the first, I, I get the first user uh, that GitHub API return for the search call. Yeah, and I report information about this user, like username, uh, whatever, user email. Then I get the followers of this user. Uh, then I select the follower whose username is closest to his initial username. And closest, I mean Lev Levenstein distance. Yeah, like simple, it's artificial example. So I just get all the uh, followers, found between them the, the most, uh, the, uh, the follower with the username the most similar to initial one. And yeah, and then repo report the information about this, this user. And again, continue this. For, for these followers, I again found followers who find similar, and again and again, yeah? And uh, the idea is to return 
uh, a, a the limit of the results or stop when there is no followers, yeah? So we have initial event is a query and limit, and then kind of uh, application or program should return like a set, a chain, uh, a stream, or a, a list of, of this information of, of the similar followers. Yeah, and uh, like oh, I'm designing, yeah? I'm uh, creating a program, yeah? And with this, uh, with this alpha approach, with all these uh, primitive, uh, primitive stages, uh, it's, I think it's quite, quite easy to understand what my pr uh, program will do. So first uh, I initiate some data, then I perform search. This will go point will be used to, to get a loop. So I get user, I increase internal counter to control how many users I already found. There is a clone step uh, 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 that clones events. So one event go directly uh, uh, to, the, to the output. So I will have this first user. The second event uh, will go down. So first I get followers. Then I will see if there are followers. Uh, uh, if, if there are no followers, I will just stop process. It's a dead end component. And if I find, uh, if, yeah, if I have found followers, I first find the closest fo follower. Then I reassign some uh, uh, variables and uh, send event back to this go, uh, go to point. Yeah, qu quite simple. Yeah, yeah, that's a kind of idea to, to have like everything like uh, straightforward to just uh, follow follow the event and understand what what is uh, what is happening with uh, inside the program. Yeah, and what what we need like it's a it's a solution actually, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm gonna to uh, quickly show you uh, in detail. So yeah, we need basically two services in pipeline. Yeah, one service that will communicate with GitHub here it is, and one service that uh, just does this Levenstein distance. This service is just an elixir elixir model and pipeline over there. And let me quickly. Uh, show details. So, one moment. So, uh, so first, Levenstein service. Yeah, it's extremely simple. How to zoom? I think. Yeah, so it's it's just el an elixir elixir module, elixir module. Yeah, you see the definition of the model since it's JSON, it's just uh, just uh, strings. Yeah, but again, this idea of having a possibility to uh, to have custom elixir models is just for kind of creating small small thing like in this case. And you see that this this service has a very very primi uh, primitive interface. Yeah, uh, yeah. First, this service called Levenstein, you see this on the top, Levenstein. And the interface is quite simple. It's only one function closes. Yeah, this function accepts two argument name and names. Yeah, uh, then you specify what should, what will be called. Uh, it's a distance module that we defined uh, on top with the function closest and output will be the closest name also type string. So this is very simple one. GitHub service is a bit more complex because actually we have three call to GitHub service to, to find uh, users by search term, initial query, then to get information about user, uh, get user and uh, get the follower. But again, uh, you see this is GitHub service. It will use, it's again a separate library, but it's a, uh, this ki kind of, this client library is a very thin library. It's a just one, one, one file that actually does this trans transport thing. Yeah, there are not uh, uh, many things happen. We specify uh, URL, we, sp we specify some headers, and yeah, and here's interface. So find users, yeah, that will have query, prepare, I call method get the path search users, I prepare a query and per page, uh, in call I tell the client to parse the JSON body, then I transform, uh, I get this total counted username with a search, uh, fi uh, find users uh, request, then get user request to get information about user. Again, we specify this path to username uh, transformation step. Actually, I got a, a, a name, company, location fr from the response, and uh, get followers uh, get followers uh, function that goes to followers and get the the followers from GitHub GitHub uh, API. So this is a definition of GitHub service, yeah? Levenstein service, GitHub service, and finally pipeline. And again, <coughs> in pipeline, uh, kind of what you see and what you get with this approach. So you, s you saw this uh, chain of uh, uh, comp of components, and actually this is the same chain you 
you see in the code. So uh, here is here is just components that you can see, like first component uh, type stage name init, the second uh, name sta uh, search. This is go to go to point to return, then get user component, increase counter component, yeah, clone clone component uh, uh, that clones to get followers stage, then switch, yeah, that has a condition if arguments. If, if count uh, more than zero and counter uh, less than limit, it goes to the first branch that has find closest, reassign users and go to, to repeat. And the second branch is just uh, dead end, so uh, events will not go. So yeah, this is definition and and to, s to see how it works, I already prepared uh, all the queries to You, you can find this uh, example on my git and I have postman here and now I'm uh, use point uh, postman as a client to to this github kraken based application yeah <coughs> and yeah and you see like the first request is uh, define define github service yeah all, all this definition I even ad added here token because sometimes github uh, has a limit so yeah I'm sending this request okay GitHub service service defined. Yeah, then I defined define uh, Levenstein service. Send, okay, Levenstein defined. They are starting uh, GitHub service. It's very granular right now API. I think it's uh, should be done, all this uh, batch thing should be done on client side. <coughs> so uh, I started Levenstein service, started GitHub service. Now pipeline, again, I have this defini definition of pipeline as JSON. I'm posting posting it to to Kraken. Okay, it's defined. Then I'm starting pipeline. Okay, it started. And here's the call pipeline. Call pipeline. You see, like this event is just a JSON with uh, query and uh, uh, limit. And yeah, and I'm posting this to actually here on the top. Oh, oh, it now it's post to pipelines call, uh, and the name of pipeline stream similar followers. Yeah, I'm sending, it works, yeah, and then return the, the list of all the events. Uh, there are lots of information in these events. You can see here, like in counter and user data and user name. Yeah, so there are lots of information, but yeah, it's on interface layer, uh, we, uh, one can filter what, what the user actually need. Uh, yeah, and also with with this roads idea that I can define these roads, like if event has a has a type similar followers, please uh, stream this event to stream fo uh, stream similar followers pipeline. And after I after I have defined this uh, routing table, I can call Kraken directly. Yeah, like uh, uh, the, the root call. Yeah, you, you don't need to specify a pipeline name here; just to specify a type of event, and this event will go to to necessary pipeline. Again, it works, and yeah, and also streaming uh, streaming interface. Yeah, it's uh, it's not possible to demonstrate with uh, with Postman, uh, with Postman, but yeah, it just kind of you can see that it can also uh, get response and then uh, it type everything. But actually, it's easy to stream in that case because every time we found new user, we have this event and we're ready to stream it. Yeah, so actually. Uh, uh, the Kraken will stream data uh, for for each user when when it appears. You don't need to wait for 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 particular for for all the pipeline uh, to be evaluated. So, yeah, that's uh, basically basically it. Yeah, like uh, there are some technical things that uh, I'm still thinking about. Yeah, at least like creating this scaffold for for new application with predefined like folder structure, whatever, yeah, because it's kind of framework. It should should uh, should provide uh, some uh, interface to, to create basic stuff. Uh, yeah, also I'm thinking about more advanced routing. Yeah, so maybe uh, 
uh, this event can be streamed to different endpoints depending on the t on the type of event and also maybe it would be useful to kind of reverse the process maybe ask uh, ask kraken to actually pull put a uh, pull data from some source and push to another source yeah all this uh, uh routing manipulation can can be useful uh the, uh, the next thing is kind of error handling. I remember that was a question last time when I presented Octopus, that what what should they do when error occurs? Yeah, and I still don't have uh, uh, an as answer for that. Yeah, so currently how ALF actually works, if, if any unhandled errors occurs, it will just return this event directly uh, to, to the output, yeah, without any, any mechanism of uh, kind of handling this idea, uh, handling this uh, error. And yeah, and actually, kind of, I, I'm still, I, I still think that when when you kind of handle errors in your application, it becomes a part of your logic. Yeah, so kind of, I'm not sure if if both Alf and uh, uh, Kraken should provide a specific specific kind of interface DSL for handling errors. So that's what I am thinking about. I'm not not sure right now. Uh, uh, also, the, ne uh, the very interesting thing, uh, I also don't have solution, this kind of id uh, idea of data encapsulation, because uh, uh, currently in ALF and also in Kraken, each component has access to the whole event. Yeah, and maybe sometimes it's not good to to have uh, to give to give such access uh, to uh, all the components. So yeah, I have some uh, ideas about kind of to introduce this encapsulation logic to event itself. So when you when you create event, you also with event kind of create a rules about what kind of components can access to to what kind of fields. Yeah, but it's uh, again it's a very uh, uh, big and complex topic. Uh, so yeah, uh, this event encapsulation also uh, uh, hasn't solved yet, but at least I have uh, some ideas about that. And yeah, and the most interesting thing, of course, clients. Yeah, because uh, uh, currently, like with this Octopus uh, Kraken approach with the dec declarative definition, this uh, uh, Kraken looks like uh, like uh, Kubernetes for infrastructure. Yeah, like in Kubernetes, you have this defined infrastructure in, in uh, YAML files. Then you have uh, Kubernetes client. You just type uh, Kubernetes apply, and magically. Uh, your infrastructure uh, appears in the system, and the same idea c uh, can be uh, can be done here with with Kraken. Yeah, so Kraken client, you just have your uh, orchestration layer as a bunch of JSONs. Then you just type Kraken apply, and all these JSONs go goes to the Kraken service, and voila, you have kind of working system uh, just uh, in a declarative style. And of course, uh, UI client. Yeah, I showed this video how you can beautifully uh, vi vi visualize all of that. Yeah, so uh, it's quite, quite easy to do, to do that, to, to create such client, to have a uh, beautiful visualization of what is going in, uh, on your system. And also uh, in terms of UI client, I'm thinking maybe it would be even cool to have like idea. So you, have, you can just kind of create these building blocks like low code platform, uh, connect them, specify what kind of services you wanna call in each component. And uh, voila, you can you have these JSONs and you post them to the Kraken agent and you you have your system. So, yeah, the client is a kind of huge thing, but now uh, mostly concentrated, of course, on the uh, uh, server side. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, guys. I could start. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, you um, described your interface as being declarative, but then it also contains Elixir code. Is, um, it's only me that I find it quite awkward to put Elixir code into JSON. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, it has a bit of Elixir, but uh, uh, you can put any. Uh, you you cannot put any Elixir code here, so it's kind of checking what you can put. So basically, you can put just this accessors uh, thing to to get specific value from from arguments. Uh, a bit of uh, list functions to get, for example, list first, whatever. So uh, you can put uh, Elixir. Uh, you you have to put some code. You have to describe in some way 
how you kind of get uh, specific data from uh, from the event. So that is why I use Elixir for now, this Elixir string. But uh, also it's quite uh, easy. Uh, uh, it's possible with uh, Octopus to add custom helpers. So you can have a function that you will pass arguments and you will come to understand of from the name of the function what it does. So yeah, a bit, a bit of Elixir, a bit of coding should be there because you have to describe kind of, if, if for example, you have event with nested structure, uh, some way you, ca you, you have to kind of specify that I'm gonna get for, for this particular service, I go and get this kind of value. And for me, currently Elixir, like with this accessor, they kind of mo more or less similar in uh, most of the languages. So arcs, I have like first uh, arc, arcs square brackets x, square brackets y, it's more or less uh, understandable from, uh, yeah. Okay, I, I see. I mean, if it's, if it's a, a very reduced set of, of operations that you can actually, if it's just a very reduced set of operations that you can actually do at that point, maybe then it's just better to have a certain language for exactly that. It's just because I think that once you write code and it's really like, meant to be code as a more as a, as a plug in to extend the system it should be done in a elixir ide and l like separate from these de declarative files it just that's what i f feel when i see it <laughs> yeah yeah i agree i didn't think a lot about that uh yeah maybe some uh, specific language uh, can be invented for that uh, but yeah like my my current justification is that it's just a very simple set that very understandable so actually just the getters because you, you don't have access of, uh, from this string of code to events you can so do anything it should probably should just be a, a small dsl for that particular purpose at, at that point mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah just yeah. a thought anybody else like uh, the the JavaScript example, I was feeling like, as you say, DSL, um, that will be actually pretty interesting to see like what would, because with Elixir, which I like more than Jason, but that's me personally, with Elixir, you can write these DSLs, right? And we see that with Actual, for example, but we also see, see that now with NX, like there's actually many ways you can write these kind of um, DSLs in Elixir, and then you have the IDE, you have all of that. Ever about that, or was it just Jason from the beginning? It was uh, uh, Jason from the beginning, and there is kind of a purpose for that because Jason is the simplest data structure that can be. Yeah, in Jason we have like lists, uh, objects, and data types like integer, whatever. So that was kind of initial idea. Is it possible like to having such a such a limited amount of constructions actually uh, implement that. If it's implemented with JSON, now it can be implemented with anything because th there is nothing simpler than, than JSON. So yeah, well of course, on top of that, you uh, anyone can create languages in any actually programming language too that will produce such a JSON, yeah? So with kind of when we have such a reduced interface, it's absolutely now possible and easy to create cracking uh, interface in any programming language that will produce these simple, simple uh, J JSONs. Yeah. Um, also, just a follow up from that. I mean, yes, you have JSON, very simple um, data type, but then inside the JSON, you have these accessor functions, which are complex and maybe not initially obvious what they do so then you extend the basic so you know you already need to extend the basic uh, language that you have so and I, I agree like a dsl or these kinds of things are very like you could type check them you can do a lot of things and also when i saw this like this slide with the code like these big three jasons wasn't i i thought i saw a dev module in there somewhere yeah, and in this uh, service, Levenstein service. Levenstein yeah, yeah. service is actually defines a module inside uh, Kraken. Yeah, it's better maybe to... to yeah, 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 okay, so I wasn't sure, but yes. Yeah, here it yeah. is. Yeah, that's, a, that's a kind of, it, it was initial idea. So maybe sometime it uh, can be useful to also to define some, some code, yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's because Kraken written in Elixir, it's possible to, uh, to s submit Elixir uh, uh, code in it, yeah, yeah.
and then you can execute it anywhere like like lambda and then that was like so if you had a dsl you can do local development but also you can send it to this cloud service somewhere and now it's always being executed in a pipeline or like in just independently so that would be actually a really sweet deployment experience as well right a bit like giga mm -hmm. here but even on a higher level like you have a simple service you upload it and you're done which is i i think kind of what you show right you upload it and then it's yeah, yeah, you just d d and yeah, dynamically under the hood, it dynamically defines modules, modules uh, in Elixir. E every service has a corresponding modulus, every pipeline has corresponding modulus components, so lots of dynamic uh, uh, real uh, real time compilation happens on, on Kraken to, to create really all like that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do you have more questions? Um, so, just to get this right, like your idea was to make basically Elixir more accessible to people that don't code, or did I get that right? No. Oh? <laughs> yeah. I the, the idea is to uh, uh, the idea is to create uh, orchestration layer for for the whole system in a declarative way. So the idea is not about Elixir. It's the idea of how we engineers, like imagine you're an engineer that works not for a specific service, but you're kind of system level engineer. You're uh, designing uh, up, uh, a system flows. You're designing how your system will work when user orders uh, product, whatever. So you, you design this, you architect, uh, architect on a high level. And now you have a tool to, to write your code in JSON. Like first you have this DSL, like this, uh, language, let's say, to write this, and also you have a runtime environment to actually put your code there and uh, and uh, execute it. Yeah, so I think that's the idea. Uh, like During like the talk, I, I asked myself like, why wouldn't you just write that in code, like instead of in the JSON? So I didn't really get the maybe the the benefit yet so clearly, but maybe that's I don't know. For for the next talk, an idea to uh, I don't know make more clear or something. Yeah, like uh, the benefit the same. Like why why we uh, uh, now use uh, uh, Kubernetes and like Kubernetes this declarative approach for defining system. Yeah, because when when it's in code, you have to know how to code. Yeah, uh, code uh, every time is different. But with declarative approach with Kubernetes, you can you you uh, write something, you can share with other other will download. Okay, put some modification to it. So the declarative style it's extremely extremely easy. So the same idea here. So with these services, you have declarative uh, definition of the services that can be also referred by other people that works for a specific service. So it's a specification, yeah? And also you have declarative definition of your pipelines that you can easily visualize. You can show your boss, like you see, here is my program. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I totally mm -hmm. get that one. Okay, so I, I think I understand a little bit more. And the, the second uh, part maybe to the question is, or the an idea, you demonstrate basically a pipeline. So I assume it is, uh, the, the benefit is to parallelize it in some way, but then you have an example where the input is dependent on the output of the previous iteration, which is maybe not the best example for that. <laughs> yes, not the best <laughs> example, of course, uh, but in this example, at least I demonstrated, I kind of want to, to, uh, to create an example that shows many different components and also this yeah, streaming I, I idea. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like all, all of the, all, almost all the existing components are now on this slide. So different types, go to, clone, switch. So yeah, it's artificial and also streaming. So you have one input, but uh, as an output, you have several, several events. So it's kind of streams. So yeah, that is why this uh, example. Thank you for the presentation. I've got two questions. Well, one is not much of a question, it's more like a comment. So like your idea of making a small component that can be easily reused uh, in across different systems, I mean, that's right, yes? Yeah, and that is very similar to the idea of enterprise service bus that was popular, like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. I mean, did you find an <laughs> inspiration there or is it just the coincidence uh didn't didn't get it completely like uh, what do you mean declaration of services uh no I, I mean like many years ago like 15 20 years ago there was this idea of enterprise service bus 
So to eliminate all those waste of writing uh, code again and again, we would do a very little services, uh, like, like a component services uh, that we would reuse across the whole company. So if some other department would need to write some other system of the code, they could, could uh, just reuse all those code and logic that was written before that. So like, uh, th like I, I'll rephrase my question to be more easy and generic. About, I mean, is your main goal is about component reusability? Yeah, I would say like uh, the first comment, it's not an old idea, it's still the same idea we have right now. So that is why we s uh, split system into services or microservices. Yeah, and we still use this uh, event bus like let's say RabbitMQ or whatever, then you can c uh, communicate uh, uh, and call uh, uh, all these uh, underlying routines. So yeah. I mean, uh, like uh, the idea, well, now we do services that kind of encapsulate some logic so they have like a specific interfaces. <laughs> Uh, that are tailored to the logic that they have. And like the idea of enterprise service bus is you would do like a very low level components, like bits that you would reuse. And I saw that you do something quite close. I mean, all those uh, steps in your workflow, are they meant to be reused in other programs, in other workflows? Yeah, for sure. Like uh, uh, services, services definition, like the idea behind services is to create a client. Like, uh, uh, like uh, I'm as an engineer, imagine on a system level, I, I kind of don't care about uh, internal uh, implementation of all the service. I have this ses a set of services. I just want to have a, uh, a common interface to them. Yeah, I create these services, uh, declarative interface mapping, and yeah, and these and these uh, services, these definitions can be now uh, used in any any component and any pipeline. So yeah, it's kind of it's not a it's not a low-level uh, implementation of the service. It's more like interface, like client libraries, like JSON uh, uh, written in JSON client libraries for services inside the system. Yeah, and I've got the second question, like a, a, an, an easier, more specific one. <laughs> so, uh, how about testability? How you how do you test all this logic? So uh, everything is uh, uh, un under the hood. It's Alf. Yeah, Alf is uh, Elixir Elixir Gen stages. Yeah, these processes, uh, gen server that connect to, to to each other. So, yeah, like uh, if if uh, if unhandled here, yeah, like system crash happens, like process crash happens, then Elixir kind of restarts, Erlang virtual machine restarts all these pipelines, so there is a restart. But actually, like uh, most of the errors are kind of rescued internally, and and especially with kind of on a system level, you don't have any kind of thing that should kind of crush this because you just call services. So in that case, like it, uh, it's more like crash somewhere on a, your service level than on this orchestration layer. Yeah, I meant like uh, testability. How do unit test the logic, the flows themselves? I mean, not, not in the runtime, but when you just write the logic like this engineer, he need to test that what he's writing makes sense. Yeah, sure. You have like uh, each each definition defines some modules, so you can directly test modules that uh, were created uh, when you posted this definition, or you can just uh, post uh, test it through API. Like you post the service or pipeline. Now you have a s set of events for uh, with expected results. So you send if currently you you can't like locally unit test that code. Like I don't know, do test driven development of the JSON schema? Uh, you ca you ca you at least like uh, you can test it in the same way like we test, uh, like we write request tests. Like here, for example, in this project that I demonstrated, pipeline test is just, I uh, I define, like define at start GitHub service. I just kind of posting, posting the definition, uh, asserting that definition is okay. Then starting service, then define and start a Levenstein service, define and start pipeline. So it's kind of integration test, like request test. I just testing that my JSON works properly, and then when I call call the pipeline, uh, I have an event, yeah, and yeah, and I just assert that this event will return something. But here again, it's kind of system orchestration layer. So your your it it more like integration or tests. Yeah, it's more high level test because under the hood you you call lots of underlying service logic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anton. Welcome. Uh, Thank you again.
take a break. Uh, if you have more questions to Anton, you can just uh, walk up to him and back there should be some pizza and maybe there's still some more drinks in there. Let's come 20 minutes, 15 minutes, let's see.